suit up. It might get weird. I'll be there ASAP. 14 years have passed between Incredibles 1 and 2, and while the sequel picks up right where the first one left off in story time, the Underminers escape. It's striking how different this new Incredibles world feels. The contrast wordlessly reflects how different our world today seems from the one in which we watched the first movie a decade and a half ago. And for an animated superhero movie set in an alternate version of the 60s, Incredibles 2 has a lot to say about our times. Incredibles 2 drops us into a world that's suddenly more uncertain, sinister, and fused with threat. It taps into today's political divisiveness and distrust in government, our changing gender dynamics, and our cultural obsessions with marketing and branding. In the context of this darker world, the movie asks its fundamental question. Do superheroes really do the world good? Does watching a superhero movie inspire us to be better? Or does it infantilize us with the fantasy that godlike beings will save us so we won't have to solve problems ourselves? Thank you, Mr. Incredible. You've done it again. Yeah, you're the best. No, I'm just here to help. And in times that feel dark, do we need to cut ourselves off from this lazy escape? Or does it become more crucial than ever that we have strong heroes to look up to? I just want to thank you for, like, for being you. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified about all of our new videos. The world of the first Incredibles reflects the challenges of middle age. Mr. Incredible slash Bob has to accept that his glamorous, exciting youth is over. We appreciate what you did in the old days, but those days are over. And he has to learn that normalcy can be great, even if his life is a little more boring than he'd like. His family is worth that sacrifice. Yet this first Incredibles world is still generally stable and safe. Its major evils are bureaucracy and mundanity. We're supposed to help people. We're supposed to help our people! Starting with our stockholders, Bob! In Incredibles 2, the plates have shifted. There's a vague yet perceptible shift darker in tone. And two key things have changed in the Incredibles world. First, superheroes are now fighting back against their illegal status. Bob and Helen explicitly debate the question, what do we do if we live in a time when the laws are wrong? Superheroes are illegal. We want to fight bad guys. I use the bad guy. Ideally, as Elastigirl says, we try to reform the laws. But what if that's not in our power? Do we break the law? When Elastigirl takes a new job to act out in the open as a super, help me bring supers back into the sunlight. This is an act of civil disobedience. Following icons like Martin Luther King Jr. and Gandhi, she's staging a nonviolent resistance in order to change unjust laws. Oh, it's crazy, right? To help my family, I gotta leave it. To fix the law, I gotta break it. You've got to, so our kids can have that choice. So this movie is saying that if you really believe something is wrong in your society or government, then you have to resist, even if that means going outside the law. It's time to make some wrong things right. The second key thing that's new in The Incredibles 2 world is the focus on shaping public perception. What is the main reason you were all forced underground? Ignorance. Perception. We need to change people's perceptions about superheroes. The movie is referencing today's commercial world in which, if you have a problem, the go-to solution is rebranding. So suddenly, The Incredibles are placed in a nebulous, post-truth environment. Gone are the old school superhero values like good and bad, truth and lies. It's about what people believe and how to shape what they believe. There are good and bad sides to this. On the one hand, anyone can get their story out and change people's minds. So if we want to change people's perceptions about superheroes, we need you to share your perceptions with the world. On the other hand, shady special interest groups can manipulate and control people's beliefs according to their own agendas. Incredibles 2's answer to these dilemmas of the divisive post-truth world is to return to some common ground we can all agree on. What? Is this all vegetables? Who wanted all vegetables? The magic of The Incredibles has always been that it's a superhero story second and a family one first. And the message of both Incredibles movies is that what's normal is super. Things people do every day, like raising a family, are incredibly hard, rewarding, and courageous. Done properly, parenting is a heroic act. 
done properly. So if we're concerned about chaos or divisiveness in the world today, we can recognize that the most heroic thing we can do is the basic work of being there every day to love and support each other as families and communities. And this will always be the solid black and white truth. The first Incredibles used the all-American nuclear family to critique traditional gender roles. It focused on Mr. Incredible's masculine pressure to be strong all on his own. I have to do this alone. And Elastigirl's female burden of feeling that she has to overextend herself to take care of others. But in the sequel, we're starting to see these traditional family roles changing, and pretty explicitly reflecting today's Me Too era and the future is female mood. Elastigirl gets to step out into the spotlight, no longer defined by her relationships. Bye, sweetie. I'll watch the kids, no problem. I like mom's new job! This is actually uncomfortable for Helen at first, because she's used to supporting others. Now she gets to experience others supporting her. What gets presented to to me in particular is, is the opportunity for me to explore being exclusively Elastigirl whereas I've been Helen Parr, mother, wife, um, predominantly for years. Elastigirl shines in her new role and rediscovers a more independent piece of herself that she's forgotten about. A new Elasticycle. Elasticycle? I didn't know you had a bike. Hey, I had a mohawk. There's a lot about me you don't know. Going out into the world, she also sees that she's having an impact on other women. I felt like an outcast before, but now, with you being you, I feel like, <sighs> yay me. So it's important that she's stretching herself out of her comfort zone and not just for her own sake. Helen uh, makes a choice to go out and support her family. They need her to go out there and make some money. And they also need her to make uh, uh, supers illegal again. She wants her kids to be fully realized as supers in the world. Yet equally as heroic is Bob's growth in the domestic sphere as he learns the value of being a stay-at-home dad and supporting his wife's career. Cooking! Cooking! You're not cooking! Oh my God! Cooking! <laughs> Whoa, it's an understatement to say it's difficult for Mr. Incredible to step aside and let his wife be center stage. Elastigirl is our best play. Better than me? <clears throat> Probably the first idea I had about this movie was right on the heels of the original movie. And that was that I wondered how Bob would take it if his wife got the assignment rather than him. And it's not because he thinks uh, poorly of his wife, it's because he so believes in his own ability. Bob has to come to understand how hard it really is to be the primary caregiver. They want us to do it this I don't way. know that way. Why would they change math? Math is math. Math is math. You know, it sounds mundane and easy, but it's a much more difficult job than most people, most guys would think. We needed AA batteries, but I got triple A's, and now we still need AA batteries. Yet, it's heartwarming and empowering to watch Mr. Incredible eventually start to take pride in his new role as a stay-at-home dad. However fantastic Elastigirl is at her new job, she can't have this chance without Bob supporting her choice. I couldn't have done this if you hadn't taken over so well. In the first movie, Mr. Incredible had to learn that he needed his family and couldn't do it all on his own. I'm not strong enough. If we work together, you won't have to be. In this movie, both parents end up needing their kids' help. So whether it's mom or dad out there being the primary breadwinner, the ultimate lesson is still the same. Family is strong together. Sometimes we have to forego the glory and take on responsibilities that aren't what we feel like doing. But the end game is helping the unit as a whole succeed. I've got to succeed so she can succeed, so we can succeed. I get it, Bob. I get it. The villain of Incredibles 2, the screen slaver, aims some scathing critiques at today's entertainment culture. The screen slaver interrupts this program for an important announcement. The screenslaver uses screens to hypnotize characters and turn them into puppets. So this is getting at how passively consuming entertainment can turn us into zombies without agency. It defines who I am. We're not saying you have 
What? Someone on TV said it. Even the screenslaver's name is a statement in itself. It announces that modern people are slaves to their screens. Screenslaver is a commentary on our uh, addiction, attraction to screens and and the way in which they hypnotize us and maybe what they're doing to our <laughs> behavior a little. The Screenslaver argues that we consume packaged versions of reality via our screens in order to avoid actually living ourselves. So on the one hand, the Screenslaver is warning of the evils of distraction entertainment in general. On another level, the Screenslaver attacks our desire to watch superhero characters specifically. The argument is basically that people watch superheroes as an escape instead of facing the hard work that we really do need to do to make our lives and our world better. Other superhero movies also explore this question of whether superheroes actually do more harm than good. What would you call a group of US-based, enhanced individuals who routinely ignore sovereign borders and inflict their will wherever they choose? A lot of superhero movies took this path where so much has happened or when they do their super things, there's so much residual damage that now everybody wants to go, well, is it worth it? But in Incredibles, since it's combined with this commentary on screens, the question of whether superheroes are good for us is really a stand-in for the question of whether superhero movies are good for us. Does watching superhero blockbusters actually inspire us to be braver or more moral in our lives? Or are these movies just distractions that let us briefly imagine being powerful so that afterwards we feel content not to act in our own world? This is an age-old debate, most famously associated with Bertolt Brecht, who argued that theater should leave audiences with critical distance and not give them a satisfying emotional climax so that they go home motivated to enact social change. At one point in the film, Helen mentions that she has both a cynic and a believer in her. The screenslaver's criticisms of society are valid, but they're the cynical truth. And the movie ultimately leaves us with the other side of the truth, the believer's truth, which is that superheroes and their movies can empower us to be better. Their life could be mundane, but they choose to be, you know, heroic. Moreover, Incredibles 2 suggests that these role models are needed most of all in times that feel chaotic or scary. What Incredibles 2 leaves us with most of all is that, however uncertain you feel about the direction your world is going in, you do contain the powers within you to make a positive difference. Because for all his flaws, Syndrome was kind of right all those years ago. Everyone can be super. All of us normals really are supers too. Or at least, we can be. You will be great. I will be great. And you will too. We will both be great. Hi guys, Susanna and Deborah here. If you like what we do and you want to help us grow, one of the best things you can do is support us on Patreon. We make special polls for our patrons where you can vote for a video you want us to make. And right now we're giving away three free months of MUBI, a really fantastic movie streaming service. Love MUBI. We're such fans. Awesome. And we're giving that away to a limited number of patrons, so be one of the first to go check it out. The link is right here. 